right. I want to say thank you, everybody, for joining today. Uh, hello. Give you a little wave. Um, I'm here with a special guest today, uh, Jermaine Hargrove. Uh, Jermaine, man, why don't you go ahead and let 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 the people know a little bit about you? Uh, you know where you're from, uh, when you were diagnosed with diabetes, and you know I know you got some cool stuff going on. So we're gonna definitely jump into that yeah. later, as far as that you know that animation stuff. But go ahead and you know give it yeah. give a give a little in introduction about yourself. Great, great. How everybody doing? My name is Jermaine Hargrove. I'm originally from Newark, New Jersey. I was diagnosed with diabetes, type one diabetes in 2005. Uh, I think it was June, it was like summer, June or July, 2005. Um, you know, every I've been in the entertainment business for a long time, probably about 15, 13 to 15 years. And, you know, I just kind of dibble and dabble with cartoon stuff, but not really taking it serious. I've always been a kind of a doodle drawings and, different stuff like that. So I knew I had those capabilities, you know, even back then, but I just never really took it serious. I was more so in designing, designing clothes and designing sneakers and stuff like that. That's what I really wanted to do rather than, you know, what I'm doing now, but, you know, it just fell in my lap. So, you know, I just stayed in the music business all the way up until the time I got, right a little bit before I got diagnosed and I just left the music business alone because there was a lot of traveling. And, you know, and I knew, once I got diagnosed, you know, I'm not saying other diabetics are not in the music business or entertainment business, but I'm like, ah, this is not going to work out because I, I knew nothing about it. And, you know, I knew I was going to need help. So, you know, my family is my support. My wife is my support. So I know being out on the road is kind of like, I'm going to be on my own. And, and I'm sure that's what Fife Dog from Tribe Called Quest, from Tribe Called Quest went through too, you know, and Ghostface or Wu-Tang, you know, he's dealing with it. But, uh, you know, when you're kind of on your own with diabetes if you don't have that support team of, you know, hey, you're doing this, or hey, are you checking your glucose? Hey, uh, let's stop, let's pull over here and find something you can eat. That's my, that's the lingo around me now, whether it's my friends or family, because I don't eat meat. So they always say, let's let's find something you can eat. We, we It's easy for us to find something, but let's find something for you to eat. So I said, okay, you know, so I just left the entertainment business alone and just got into, you know, the whole animation business. And, you know, of course there were steps to it, but that's how I really fell into the animation business, you know, being diagnosed with type one diabetes. Hey man, that's, uh, I mean, you're talking sneakers, fashion. I mean, that's culture yeah. right there. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. uh, I think to, to take it even a crossover, you know, to go, from looking at stuff like that and then putting it into your work that you do now, we not we still not right. gonna jump into the animation because the animation yeah. it, it, it nah, excites me. No, you, I, was you gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say I could definitely it's definitely tied into what I'm doing. Now. Everything I just mentioned, and I never really thought about it like that, but everything I just mentioned of things I wanted to do back then, I'm definitely doing it now in the animation field. It's kind of like backwards. People like, hey, I'm a I'm gonna be a fashion designer, but. I'm like, hey, I'm going to do animation, but I'm going to do everything else I wanted to do back in the day. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to put it, I'm going to attach it to what I'm doing now. So, yeah, that's exactly it. what I'm doing. It's, it's never it's never too late. You know what I mean? Sometimes no. we think that, like, because we're not doing it in that in that present moment, that it doesn't, that it's not going to come to life. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, it, it's about if it's something that you want to do, you'll figure out how to make it work. You know what I mean? You'll figure, yeah. figure it out. But you touched on something that was important, I, I felt, you know, far as, you know, you're not going, you know, continuing down that, that music industry road. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of people, uh, I think in general that have diabetes, um, that are, that are performers or actors or musicians, um, or producers. Uh, I mean, you name Ghostface, you name, um, that I can't think of his name. Um, Five. I don't want to butcher Makai from, yeah, from uh, Tribe Five. Called Quest. Uh, yeah. and, and then also, you know, like I know somebody that I look up to in this space uh, is Damon Dash. You know, uh, yeah, I never knew growing up, you know, I never knew that he had diabetes growing up until, I don't know, I'll probably say like maybe sophomore year in college. But the fact that I already had a huge amount of respect for him, like, you know, back with Rockefeller, like seeing him do his thing, you know, it just, 
for me, it just made me feel good because, you know, I, I didn't know anybody black living, you know, with diabetes. Yeah. And, and I don't know him personally, but it just felt yeah. good to understand, like, all right, I'm not the only person out here. Like, it's other people yeah. that have type one, you know, with diabetes, because, you know, I know a lot of people that live with type yeah. two, you know what I mean? But far as type one, I didn't have I didn't have a direct connection. And, and you and you touched on the support, you know, the support comes in many different ways. It goes beyond, yeah. you know, just just somebody, um, you know, knowing that you have it, it's like, do you have those, those family members and those close friends that are kind of keeping you on track? So that support yeah. system is, is very key in anything yes. that we do, anyone living with diabetes. Yes. And definitely like, you know, when you say diabetes, um, you know, and within a household, that's what, that's what we're not going to touch, touch on gumption yet, but that's the main thing that I want to get people to understand, you know, when you talk about diabetes, like when I first got diagnosed, the first time we went grocery shopping was like a mission. I mean, we, we literally spent hours in the grocery store because it's like when I before they released me from the hospital, they said, you need to read every label. You need to look at everything that you're buying and make sure look at the, the, the levels, the sugar, the carbohydrates, like everything and we did because we it was the unknown we did that me and my wife we did that and it was like wow we've been in this grocery store close to four hours it was literally like three and a half close to four hours like because we didn't know i'm looking at this no i can't have that no i don't want to get this you know but i wasn't taught how to read labels it was a process for that i wasn't taught how hey this this may say eight grams of sugar sugar but it may say per serving and it may say four servings you know what I'm saying? I didn't know none of that. So I had to kind of figure it out while I was going on and not just me, my family. Like now, you know, my daughter, my youngest one, she had, you know, she had say certain things, slick comments like, daddy, you supposed to be having that? That's like the number one thing that, <laughs> uh, it's one thing when kids say, but when adults say it, it's like, do you know what diabetes is? You know, I can have this piece of cake, but I can't have three or four slices. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, that's that's what I really want to touch on, the misunderstanding of diabetes and what we're supposed to eat and how we're supposed to eat it. Now, I'm not saying that that if, you, if you're going to overindulge, like I just can't have one piece of cake, I got to have two or three after I eat that one. Then you got to handle your business and say, hey, I'd rather not eat that one. So I'm not saying that, you know, pieces... If you if you grab pieces of candy and different stuff and you know you're not supposed to eat it because you know that's gonna make you want to eat more, then do what you do. But I just know as a diabetic and all these years living with it, I know now how to conduct myself. You know, I would say you better know yeah, how to yeah. conduct yourself when you go out there, you know, when your parents chastise you. Like as a diabetic, you better know when you go to these Christmas parties, when you go to these family functions and you go to these cookouts. You better know how to conduct yourself. Don't just be letting yourself go. So I know that now, but I'm not going to have a soda. That's for sure. And people yeah. say, hey, just one soda, just drink half of it. No, I'm not going to do that. But other diabetics, they got their own way of conducting themselves and doing what they do as far as diabetes. I don't. You know, I try my best to live and do my part and then the rest will take care of itself. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up too, man, because I think, you know, a lot of people... One, the education piece that you get coming from the hospital. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are left behind. And and also had I've I've had this 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 discussion uh with Quisha Umemba of diversity and diabetes that you know in the hospital, it's really not their job to educate you. It's their job to get you in and get you out, which is, it's sad to say, but at the end of the day, you know, it's about money. So, you know, their job is to make sure you're stable and then get you out. But I think on the back end, you know, we have to have more, you know, more education from the endocrinologist as it pertains to certain cultures, you know what I mean? Because they are different, you know, and there is no, there is no one size fit all when it comes to diabetes. Like you said, you have your own, you know, you have your own rules and procedures, how you attack your diabetes and then other people have it as well. Like you said, the soda, I thought that was, that, that was kind of cool because I've seen people drink a regular soda. I'm like, yo, that will mess me up all the way up Me like too. it ain't even yep. like taking insulin and everything like it will yeah. you know I couldn't tell you the last time I had just a regular you know a regular pop but you know yeah. I think you know as we continue to 
try to educate and bring awareness around, um, you know, I would say people of color, black people, indigenous people, uh, you know, there has to be this understanding that there is a huge cultural difference and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think yeah. like doctors have to start to take the time and endocrinologists and podiatrists like to actually take the time to understand the patient and who they're dealing with, because it's not, you know, it's not a one size fit all. Yeah. And just like, just to touch on what you just said about, it's not the doctor's job or, you know, any of those nurses and everything. I just believe to a certain point it is in certain it may, it may not be their job to our culture, but I've been to nutritionist classes and I've been to different things pertaining to diabetes and the culture. It, it's a, it's a informational gap. It's a, like, we have missed, like, this is why, you know, we get into that too as well. Why it's so important with American Diabetes Association when you talk about health equity, because, you know, I did interviews and stuff. So many interviews with diabetes people and I always learn a lot. I always, and I'm always confirmed what I'm saying about in the movie, because it's like, hey, when you was diagnosed, did you, do, did you, did they tell you this? Uh, no, they haven't. Uh, did, did they, did they tell you that uh, there's certain places that you can go to that will provide funding for nutrition? Uh, no, they haven't. Where they do that at? So it, it is to a certain point, you know, when, when I was diagnosed, I mean, the nurse that, that let me go or whatever just gave me her little pep talk it was kind of short and just like okay go it's like throwing a going out a, a bird pushing their little babies to fly go i wasn't talked about mental health i wasn't talked about highs and lows i wasn't talked about anything dealing with insulin i was just talked about uh i was just told to hey let me get, let me show you this great, this how they, this how they did me. Let me show you, let me bring in this grapefruit. Let me show you how to give yourself a shot. That was it. Now you yeah. can go. So yeah. I'm sure that's in other cultures, in other communities, in other, I'm sure they're not doing that in Beverly Hills when somebody get diagnosed with diabetes. Let's just keep it like that. I'm not sure they're not doing that in these certain communities where it's people, uh, I don't want to say underserved, but it's, it's more so uh, the tax bracket, the, 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 the more money they make. I'm sure it's a whole process before they just let them go. So when you say they're not supposed to do that, they probably not. But do they do that for certain situations and certain people? I believe so. I'm for not sure. going to sit up here and say, for sure. you know, just like I was introduced. I, I did. I got a CGM. I got a CGM now. What you, what, you, what you what you what you what you I got a freestyle what? lever. Okay, okay. And we could get into that too about the cost. I don't want to just jump into that, but I'm just saying I got a freestyle lever, but I just got my freestyle lever. I've been a diabetic all these years. I was never told about a CGM. You know what I'm saying? It's my duty yeah. to a certain point to I don't I didn't know diabetes, but it's it's my duty, I guess, to do my own research or our, let me say our, our duty as a community that I come from. We got to figure it out. But my doctor, I have four different doctors, four, before the doctor I have now. But I have four different doctors. And would you believe neither one of them told me about a CGM, what a CGM you know, is? You know, you know, the crazy thing is, I, I believe that they didn't. You know, I, I do, because of certain things, and I don't know why. But these conversations, if somebody's not using something, these conversations need to be had, you know, whether a person doesn't wear insulin pump, they should be talked to. Maybe they don't want to wear one, but it, it should be brought up by the endocrinologist or a or primary maybe they care need physician, one. or maybe, or maybe they, maybe it will actually help them, you know, yeah, and then exactly. I also, and, and then I also think about the CGM aspect. Um, and this is just from personal experience. I feel like a CGM is is the best way to start because I feel like anybody that and I'm not a licensed medical professional, yeah. But I feel that um, you know individuals don't need to jump right on a pump. They need to learn how to yep. manage it with you know with without an uh, insulin pump because if the insulin yep. pump goes down, you know which they do have issues from time to yeah, time. They malfunction not, sometimes, yep. So you got to know you got to know how to get yourself insulin. You got to know how to take care of yourself with that. But you know the doctors first and foremost should be laying out all the options 
um, from insulins. Uh, I mean, like even inhalable insulin. I mean, I learned about that yep. through the diabetes community. My endocrinologist yep. never brought that up. And it goes back to a good point. Like you said, we have to do our own research, but it shouldn't always have to be us doing the research. No, it should it be the people that, that we that we're supposed to trust that's taking mm -hmm. care of our our care along with ourselves, they should be letting us know about the newest and the greatest things that are coming out and let us decide if that's something we want to try to get or not get, you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah. you know, and I learned, I learned about the inhaler, uh, the, I think it's called, what is it, five? No, what, what is it? No, it's a, it's a, it's a it's Frezza. Called. It's a Frezza insulin. And Frezza, and I spoke with yeah. the owner. Um, but I learned about Frezza through um, Dane Dash, you know? another person of color you know I, I learned about that for following him and what he's doing for diabetes and he's meeting with the one drop he's friends with the one drop people he's friends with the impressive people so i said hey uh they put the name out there and he put the people out there and i said okay let me get this person up and see how would that fit in with my movie so i spoke with the owner of Fresno, and he said hey you hit me right on time we're trying to figure out, we're going through studies now to figure out how we can do this for the youth, um, you know, as far as the insulin, as far as their product. Um, so it, it was a timing issue with that, but I didn't know about that until I followed Dame Dash on Instagram and what he's doing for diabetes. So, but we, you know, we really, we really are, and I'm not saying this to everybody, but there is a, a communication, there is a, a, a equity gap within these communities. You know, we're Dude. told certain things, we give, we're given certain things, you know, and let's go back to when I was diagnosed again. Um, you know, my wife was, she, she lost, she was laid off. I uh, didn't have insurance. And that's what we go through in the movie Gumption too, but we get to that. Um, so in these communities, we're really in trouble. When, when we're told that we're diabetics and we have to purchase insulin and we don't have insurance and what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to just sit there and die? or count our days, our days are numbered, which they really are if we don't get it together. But what are we supposed to do if we can't get insurance? If we go, if we contact people like Lily and they go, they, they give us uh, a whole four to five week um, uh, window of, you may get your insulin in four to five weeks if all of this paperwork comes back. Yeah. So we're supposed to count our days, huh? There has Man. to be something. You know, when I was diagnosed, I didn't have insulin. So, you know, the hospital, I call the hospital. Um, they didn't know, they didn't know what to do, but there was a woman of color. And it's not a racist thing, it's not a it's not a black thing, but I'm just saying it was a woman of color in the hospital that said, Hey, I know what you're going through. Write this number down. And she gave I get it, sensitive. You good, man. You good. You good. Hey, th this is why we have to have these conversations, man, because you are not the only person that has gone through this stuff, man. So I'm I mean, with I you, bro. I feel for people. I yeah. definitely feel for people because it's like she told me, she said, contact this church. She said, contact this church. They're going to help. And they did. They helped me. The man there, he was a doctor. He was a member of the church, but he was a doctor. And he said, I don't know. We had the conversation. He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know, like, why this is going on within the community. He spoke up. It was a, it was a, a Caucasian doctor. He said, I don't know. He said, but what I'm going to do for you, and he knew I was diagnosed with 1,100 sugar. He said, my God, how are you still alive, brother? Mm. How, you know. I said, man, I don't know either. I don't know about diabetes, but everybody's saying, well, how are you still alive? So it touched that man so much. He said, you know what I'm going to do for you? He said, I'm supposed to give you just enough for you to kind of get by. He said, I want you to go in that closet. He said, get, he said, I want you to get like however many boxes you need. I didn't, I didn't know at the time, like, okay, one box, two box. So I grabbed, I think I grabbed about two. And he was like, no, here, take this. He gave me like five or six boxes of insulin. And when I tell you, it was just like a, like a, how they say, like an angel in disguise. I don't know what I would have did at that point, just being diagnosed by sugar, my, my glucose was still all over the place. But that one church, and I always say, man, I'm, I got to do, I want to do something for, I just feel it's my duty to do something so other people won't feel like this. Other parents is going through the same thing. Correct. So that, that what I'm doing is gumption. 
Yeah. So, you know, and that's what everything, yeah, that's what everything I, for Gumshi up until that point, everything I just mentioned is what 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 makes Gumshi so personal to me. It's not just yeah. the film, but everything I just mentioned from the insulin, not being able to have no insulin, no insurance, nobody wanting to help me, everything is put into this movie. It, and before we jump into the gumshi, because the gumshi, man, I'm I'm over here. You know, every time I talk to you, I'm like, yo, this is this is this is a game changer. You know what I mean? And for you to be changing the narrative of what it looks like as far as people living with diabetes, it is is absolutely awesome. But I want to backtrack a little bit because yeah. you know, the I, I see the raw emotion that came on, I, and I feel it because I understand, you know. And I don't try to hold it back because I, I'm passionate about people. It ain't just it's, about me. Because exactly. if I would have died going through that, it still would be people in that community going through the same thing. So that's exactly. why I'm passionate about what I'm doing. But sorry to interrupt yeah. you. No, you good. You good. And I love the passion because, you know, like, I know coming from a competitive nature background, playing sports, it's like, just be relentless. Like you, mm -hmm. the first time I talked to you, man, you're just relentless and you're super passionate about what you do. And, you know, a lot of people say, um, you know, I like I like to use the words consistency and persistency. When you're consistent with something and you're also persistent, something good is going to come from that. And I think you, now we're going to jump into the gum sheet. Now yeah. you've been doing something and living with diabetes for so long you see the impact that you can help make on the culture. You know, I think anybody that takes that step is like, I want to do this for the, I want to help change the culture of what it looks like to live with diabetes. I want to change the culture of that little girl, or that little boy that thinks that he, they can't, they can't live out their dreams and do what they want to do, whether they want to be a lawyer or a firefighter, or, if, you know, if they want to own their own, you know, animation company, like small town animations, like yourself, you know, these things have to be shown in display so others can see, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're only here on this earth for a short period of time. So what will we look like not trying to help not just people that look like us, but anybody, you know what I mean? And that's, that's the, the most important thing. Like we have to help because we know what it looks like in these different communities, far as underserved, under resourced, um, underprivileged. We know, we know what that looks like. So, Hey man, I want to jump into this gumshi and I, I, I just, first of all, I have to say just from me seeing a trailer, I'm I'm hooked. I'm super excited. I want to see the the trailer. Um, well, I don't want to give too much. I want to see the next trailer, and I'm definitely definitely uh, eager and ready to see the movie when it comes out. Because I already know there's so many things and components that go into doing yeah. the animation. But like yeah. being so close to somebody that's actually helping create this movie, it, it, it's awesome. So I'll let you go ahead and take the floor, man, and let us know. Let us know about the movie Gumshi. Okay, so. Like I just mentioned, everything before that is how I came up with Gumshi. Um, while I was in ICU for five days, you know, I said, man, I, you know, that's what brought, bring the passion out of me. I kept saying, man, I, I know other, I can ima imagine how many parents going through what I'm going through. Like my mom, she did everything she could do. Everything, you know, I'm, I, I, brought up, I brought up my mom because I blamed her for my diabetes. And which I shouldn't, you know, I said, forgive me because I shouldn't blame her because as a parent, you're not going to sit there. I got three other brothers. You're not going to sit there as a single parent and let your children starve. You know, there, there was rough times and we just, she was just like, one thing y'all not going to do is y'all not going to go home. Now, the health aspect wasn't even into play. That's what's going on in the communities now. Forget healthy, y'all just going to eat. I'm just going to make sure y'all going to eat. Whether it's sodas, whether it's McDonald's, whether it's noodles, oodles of noodles, whatever it is, y'all just going to eat. The consequences, we'll figure that out later, but y'all y'all not going to go hungry. So that's what Gumshi's about. Gumshi came into play as, okay, how can I put together my life story and make it uh, make it make sense to the diabetic world? Of course, I could have came up with just a regular production to say, hey, let me just do a story about a guy that has diabetes and, you know, he's going through real life and that's it. It won't be more, it won't be that more appealing than how I have it now. So I came up with a character and said, I'm going to do animation. But before that, let me get into how I started animation. Um, 
you know, like I said, I was doing designs and different things. So I said, I start looking into, I start doing my research and said, yeah, I, I really want to get into, I want to stay away from the music side because I don't want to travel and get into that no more. So I want to get into this animation space. Always was a fan and still is of Pixar, Disney and Walt Disney. And, you know, you hear Kanye say that, but I've been, I'm not saying it because Kanye said it. I've been saying, hey, I want to, I want to do what Walt Disney doing. You know, that's, that's like, that's like a hero of mine besides the God. That's a hero of mine in Walt Disney. I like the way he, 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 I seen the movie, the documentaries. I like the way he put things together, but he, so, he, was, so a, sweet. he was a thinker. He was a thinker. That's me, a thinker. You know, Brandon, from when we talk, I think. I was taught to, I was, I was raised to think and not do so much, so, but think and listen. So, you know, I did my research on Walt Disney and, and I said, okay, I'm going I'm to get into this animation space, but I didn't know how still. So, you know, I hit up a company. I was just hitting different companies and seeing how can I work with them and use my music industry ties to kind of kind of like connect the dots. So, you know, I was I was talking to a company in um, I think it was Philippines, uh, Filipino, Philippines, I think. It was so long ago. But the company, they had just did a brand new production, animation, and they were just keeping it over there. They said, hey, you hit us, you know, it's good timing because we're thinking about, we're trying to figure out how we can bring this this picture over there and bring American actors and A-list people, whatever, you know, you know, we would like for you to do it. I said, okay. And it was a gaming movie. It was about kids gaming and trying to, you know, esports. This is before esports even got big. But I thought, I said, I'm gonna make this into a youth gaming tournament in the movie, but I want to bring in some A-list actors. So the first thing that came to mind with me was Michael Jackson kid. I'm a big thinker. And I don't think like, hey, this has never happened. Like, I, I, I just don't think like that. So what I did was I said, how in the world can I get with Michael Jackson kids? This was when like, you know, they, they're still big now, but this is just like when they wasn't really doing film and TV and reality shows, this was just like, hey, that's Michael Jackson kids, blanket and, you know, Paris and the rest of them. So what I did was I said, okay, I'm gonna call their lawyer. I'm gonna find out who the lawyer is that represent one of the Jacksons. I didn't care who it was, whether he represented Jermaine or Tito, or I just found the lawyer, but I found the lawyer that represent Catherine Jackson. So I emailed him, told him who I was, told him what I wanted to do. And like I said, Michael Jackson, his ties was to Sony and I was with Sony too. So I used all that as leverage, like, hey, I'm a former Sony executive, such and such, such and such. So he hit me back like, oh, wow, wow, I think they would be, they would love this because they thinking about getting into film and TV. So long story short, so uh, everything worked out with the lawyer and they said, hey, would you, can you come to LA? Uh, Catherine want to meet you. I said, yeah, <laughs> you know? So me and my partner, uh, you know, we set up, uh, got the hotel, set everything up. And, you know, we had, we rented the, the conference room uh, downstairs from the hotel so we could meet. They had a projector and everything. So, you know, we, we gets down. Uh, we gets down there. We're in the room. And in walks Catherine Jackson. I said, oh, my God. I done made it. Already. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, I'm just being out. I'm saying, wow, I done made it. It's Catherine Jackson. It's the, the, the king of pop mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm That's like, big. That's, That's big. big. I, I was acting like a groupie. I ain't going to front. I was like, and I don't see a bunch of entertainers in my time from the Tupacs to Snoop and, you know, but with Captain Jack, that's different. I'm saying, I, I, I asked the lawyer, I said, man, after all this over, can I get a picture? He said, nah, she's not going to do that. I said, okay, I played myself. Hey, no, <laughs> so, you good. Hey, man, you got no, to take the shot, man. I know, you take <laughs> I, I know, but I'm just like, how I felt, I said, man, I played myself. But so anyway, so we in the room and she said, hello. She said, hi, nice to meet you. She said, um, your name? I said, Jermaine. And my partner name was Randy. She said, Jermaine and Randy, like my children. I said, we laughed and I was like, oh man, you right, it is. And you know, he sat down and I told her what I, everything I wanted to do. I showed her uh, some snippets from the film. And uh, she was like, yeah, you know, I, I think the children would love to do this. So long story short, could you imagine the legal stuff around all of that? A lot. The legal know, aspect, uh... it just didn't work out. But it wasn't because of her. It was because of the lawyer. It was because of everybody had their hands into play. And I said, you know what? 
I'm just going to do my own thing. So here comes along years later, and it didn't happen right away with Gumshi, but years later, okay, that's when Gumshi came into play. What would you, what would you say? What would yeah, you say how, about about how many years later? Just so people understand, like things don't yeah. happen overnight. You know what I mean? I say about four, maybe four, three or four years later. But I had the Gumshi character, but I kind of skipped over. Like, yeah, this is what I'm thinking about. Let me just see if I can make this happen for these guys, these these company in the Philippines, and I could come back to that. But yeah, it happened four years later. Well, actually, that's when it was kind of in rotation. Uh, four years later, and I was get, doing the designs, get, getting a look. I said, well, I was kind of debating, like, hey, should I use a boy character? And I'm like, man, it's not enough girl characters. Because at that time, it was just like Powerpuff Girls and um, just certain stuff on Nick Jr. Like, it wasn't like a really powerful superhero of a girl, just Powerpuff Girls that I could think of right now. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to use a boy character. I'm going to use a girl and I'm gonna use the, ass, the the image of my daughter. I'm gonna build the girl, I'm gonna draw her up, everything like my daughter, braids and everything. So, so when I did that, I came to a standstill. Everything came to a standstill, even then. Like you said, things don't happen overnight. You know, I got with a company and, and um, we just couldn't see eye to eye because everybody's not gonna see your vision. You know, this is how I wanted it. So when you, when you, and just like, well, I'm going through now, I'm going through that now, talking to different companies. Hey, why don't you do it like this? Hey, why don't you have a do? No, this is my vision. This is how I vision. see it. And actually, it's, your... it's my story. A lot of people don't know that. Gumshi is my story. So any, anyhow, so years later, up until from that point, that big gap up until before the pandemic. Then I start getting real heavy into it because I have my own water brand, which is called Fundration Water. Um, and not to get off subject, but I was going to drop, you're going to have to drop, you're going to have to drop that link in, you know, yeah, we, before we finish. I, yeah. I was kind of like in between, I was pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Casey, you could show it. Uh, the website, the website, not uh, updated, but I do have a website. Um, but yeah, back to the story. Um, I was, I was kind of in between with the, with the pandemic. I was about to purchase, a, uh, my own land with water, a water source, you know, people say, Hey, you know, they go and they purchase a warehouse and they get filters and stuff with water and all that. And a lot of these brands do. I was getting ready to, me and my wife, we was about to purchase our own water source with like over 20, 30 acres of land with the water source. You know, purified water when they say alkaline coming straight out of the ground. Um, real. Real, real. Real, like, like it was getting to that point. So, I, you know, animation was on my mind. We just like, look, we're going to be the first black-owned water source water company we're going to call it fundration and it's going to tie into diabetes but the pandemic hit and that just threw a whole monkey wrench in the game it's like wow we can't move around everything everybody's in the house and you know so we said man we gotta we gotta do something let's let's get back into the animation stuff so that's when i started getting back into the gumshi writing it coming up with the character in full in the fullness and come doing the trailer and uh, the Gumshoe movie is about uh, a 14 year old girl. She's out of North New Jersey. That's where I was born and raised. Um, and I wanted to keep that aspect of it because I stay in Georgia now. And I didn't want to tell the storyline from uh, a Georgia aspect. I wanted to tell it, tell it from a city aspect because that's how I grew up. And like I said, it's still my life story. So I grew up in Jersey and that's where you're going to see the big buildings and the cabs and like you see in the trailer and, and the hospital, the big old hospital, is doesn't look country like like in Georgia. So you no, know, it's about a fourteen year old girl who's from a single parent household. Um, the mother just lost her job. Um, she doesn't have insurance, and it's crime going on in the city. You know, and if y'all don't know about New Jersey, that was one of the stolen car capitals of the world. That's why they made the movie New Jersey Drive, and that's also in this film. Um, you know, just, Classic. yeah, they just, <laughs> you know, I wanted to show the aspect of what a diabetic goes through besides being diabetic. You know, let's do a checklist. The parent doesn't have insurance. Check. The parent doesn't have a job. Check. It's crime going outside the parent's door. Check. Oh, by the way, she has type two diabetes and needs insulin. Check. So what does, what does she do in that aspect? 
you know, she still has to be a 14 year old. She still has to have dreams and she still has to have goals. She still has to be a teen. She's 14 years old. So what's she supposed to do, give up? She's supposed to tell you you're not gonna be nothing. You're not gonna make it out of this environment. You're not gonna be nothing. So what Gumshi is, Gumshi's, she's the, I keep saying, I want her to be the face of diabetes, but that's only to a certain aspect. I'm not trying to take away the blue circle. I'm not trying to take away what people perceive diabetes to be when they say, hey, blue is diabetes month. But what I'm saying is I want Gumshi to be the face of that community, that community that may be in, in South Central, that community that may be in New York, that community that may be in Chicago. She's the face of that. So I don't want people to misunderstand when I say, hey, Gumshi's the face of diabetes. No, she's the face of diabetes that we know. You know, I, so I, 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 I love that. And I told you this before I said I go yeah. I go but well, personally I go by the face of diabetes because I yes, want yes. I want people I want people to understand like at the end of the day, like I'm the face that you typically don't see you know what i mean yeah. and that's just that's the reality of it you know and some people are like ah oh, nah but that's the truth you know what i mean and i like what you said it's like we we have to associate that with something we have to make you know diabetes is a uh one of my mentors says he always says and coming from him is funny it's like it's a lousy disease it is a lousy disease yeah. but it's about what we make it just like life is you know so at the end of the day yeah. you know Kids having somebody to look up to, like Gumshi, the protector, like exactly that. That's a that's that's forever changing because now they feel that they have a superpower within them to do whatever it is exactly. that they want to do in life. Exactly, and that's why I say it. I don't want to misunderstand because I would never disrespect what diabetes is and was before I got diagnosed. I know it's about the color blue and the blue circle, and like I'm not taking nothing away from that. I put that on her on her superhero suit. I want people to know, hey, you see that white, you see that blue check? That means she's she's a diabetic. She's a superhero, but I want people to see that that blue circle, not check, excuse me, that blue circle, and know that hey, that's what I mean by she's the she's the face of diabetes within those communities. Now she may not be the face of diabetes in Beverly Hills because their diabetes is different from ours. And I'm not saying the actual disease, but I'm just saying the aura, the whole stigma of diabetes is totally different. Completely. in certain communities so i want gumshi in which i will fulfill that goal you know i want gumshi to be the face of you know when you go into these pediatric uh health companies in these communities hey you see gumshi you're not gonna you, you're not gonna see iron man you're not gonna see spider-man you're not gonna see any of these other superheroes but when you go i want those children to be like okay there's gumshi now my day is not gonna be so bad because i know hey i see gumshi and 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 back to what Gumshi is. Gumshi's a 14-year-old. Um, the mom, she's trying to figure it out. She, she's, she's trying to figure it out as a, as a parent. Um, you know, she doesn't know what to do. Just like parents now, they don't know, they don't know how, you know, what, what's the next step. They just know they don't want their children to suffer. You know, they're gonna do whatever. They work two or three jobs to say, hey, my child need insulin. I work two or three jobs. So Gumshi knows this. So she's trying to make the community. Her mom is trying to help her and she's trying to help her mom. Now, how is she trying to help her mom? Because her mom is already stressed out about what is she going to do about this diabetes situation. Also, my mom is worried about the community. It's crime going on. So Gumshi's like, I, you know, I wish I, I need to help my mom and my community. I wish I could be a superhero. This, these are her thoughts while having yeah. diabetes. I wish I could help my mom out so she's, she doesn't worry about going out to her car, getting a pocketbook snatched. And this is when I say crime, I don't mean, of course, there's still a youth film. I don't mean guns and you know, people getting their heads blown off. And this is yeah, not that kind yeah. of film. It's 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 a fun crime, but it's crime. It could be purse snatching, it could be uh somebody stealing something from the store or anything like that. But I, I don't want it to be, be perceived as just like a terminator kind of movie, like <laughs> where it's just gun battles and no, that's why I put that's why I added the karate aspect of it. I say Gumshi is a mix of, mixture of it uh Cobra Kai, I'm sure everybody see Cobra Kai. Oh man, the Matrix, <laughs> the Matrix, the Cobra Kai, the Matrix, and a little bit of, you know, I would say like the Last Dragon, meaning because it's like community Ooh. orientated. Like you may see, uh, I like the what I liked about the Last Dragon is 
they own, it's the unknown, they own a pizza parlor, you know? So I'm doing stuff, I don't want to tell the whole story away, but I'm doing stuff that, it, in this movie, it's just like, okay, what black cup, what, what black owned family owned a pizza parlor? That's what I thought watching The Last Dragon. And I'm like, wow, they doing it. But that's a step up. When you look Man. at it, it's like, we need to be embracing that. Like, the, the, I, you know, I felt like I wanted to own a pizza parlor after watching that Man, movie. The Last Dragon, Man, dude, like, I know that I already wanted to see this movie, but you tying in some epic stuff that's got The yeah. Matrix. Like, come on, man. Like, that's a classic. The Last yeah. Dragon. For one to yeah. see safety, one must go to the heart of danger, man. Like exactly. this. <laughs> exactly. So those aspects of it is in there. And Hush, I made her super, uh, I made her hero in the movie. Of course, it's her mom, but I made her hero, like, that she look up to is Bruce Lee. Because Bruce Lee, not just only for the fighting aspect, but how he thought. Like I said, I'm yeah. a thinker. And it, you got people in these communities that are that are thinkers. They think deep. And these are the ones that's going to change. These people are going to change the world. You know, just given the environment, just because they have their environment doesn't make them, does not make them who they not they not are. You know, they 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 still, you're going to get the Steve Jobs and the Walt Disney's and the people, the next president that's coming out of these communities and in these harsh situations. So that's what Gumshi is. Gumshi is a fashion designer. You know, yeah. Spider-Man, he wrote that, the newspaper, Superman, I think he wrote that. You no, know, Spider-Man was a photographer. Superman worked at the newspaper. So Gumshi and her cousin, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, kiss my cover. Gumshi, Gumshi and her cousin Maurice, which is a 16 year old in the film, they have their own fashion uh, clothing line because that's what the youth do now. That's what they, that's what the youth is all about now. They dictate what's cool, what's selling, do. what's hot in fashion. They could tell you that button ups, hey, you're lame. You, uh, those are old people clothes. So, in the film, that's what they do. They, 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 they're known for their fashion, and and, and then she turned that into a, hey, don't you know when you buy our clothes, a portion of that goes to diabetes, uh, insulin in the in a, the hood, the community. Purchasing insulin, it's not about us looking fresh. I want to help the community. That's what Gumshi tells her cousin. Her cousin That's is a awesome. sneakerhead in the film. So they go back and forth about how we should do this. She's more so, I'm off. That's why she becomes the superhero. He becomes the helper of her. But at a certain point, you'll see in the film why he becomes the helper. But he's all, he's to the point, he's hood. But he's a, he's a geek. He's a nerd. But he's one of those ones that say, hey, you know, my brother is a big time uh, criminal. I, you know, we'll do snitching over here because she want to form a community watch. Like I yeah. said, she she thinking that every aspect before she gets her superpowers, how she can help the community, which is helping her mom. Her mom is afraid to go out, out at sometimes because of the, the community they live in. And like I said, this is what's going on in these communities. On top of having diabetes, I we got to worry about four or five different things. I love on top it. I of love having an issue in our, our body. And I, and I think, you know, a lot of people, you said the four and five issues, a lot of people don't truly understand, you know, um, what it's like, you know, your, your own personal story and you wrap it into a character and that character um, essentially resembles your daughter. And like, yep. you know, you want to tell your story. And I think it's, I think it's great, man, because you're, you're still telling your story, but you're telling it from a different perspective and a different lens to where it's a completely different audience that can connect with that story. You know, people will connect with your story, but now that you have that, the animation, you connect with kids, you can connect with uh, doctors, you can connect with people in the community. And that's what it's about. You're bringing everybody to the same table because the issues, you know, we live in different households, but a lot of the issues are the same. Single family yeah, home, always not, uh, no access to insulin, uh, no yeah. access to the technology, uh, healthy awareness food. or knowledge. Yeah. You know or, what I or mean? Or just even foods, healthy food. Food, you know. And that's the thing. Like you brought it up about your mom. You know, like that was. You know, you you blamed her, but essentially you were going through something that you didn't know. And I, and I, I remember when I was diagnosed, my mom blamed herself. I'm like, no, it's not your fault. Like yeah. it happened. You know what I mean? So yeah. you know, but then that aspect of the food, or it, it's kind of like, where do you pivot? Because there's so much trauma that comes from that original diagnosis. And if somebody isn't strong enough to handle it, it 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 can cripple the caregiver and it could cripple the individual living with diabetes because if you don't have that support system, um, you know, like 
I just think all in all, like this whole movie, like I'm so every time I hear t- hear you talk about it, because it's something else that I learn about, like like yeah. the reason behind you doing it. And to yeah, me, so it much. just makes yeah. it makes me want to see it even more. And I know you touched on you touched on the fashion. I see you got a it looks like you got some swag on right now, like some gumshi swag. And I think yeah, that's just that's, merch. Yeah, okay, that's, that's just, just some that's just merch. Okay. And we are selling merch now. Um okay. I think everybody who's supporting every, you know, the people just love that this movie is about to come out and just the whole aspect of it. They buying merch now. You know, yeah. the, I, I thank the diabetic community for supporting. You know, I have a uh, a, a T-shirt which Gumshoe wears in a movie. It says, um, superheroes, diabetics are superheroes. Yeah. Um, everybody, that's going to be our number one seller because so many people, they love that shirt and they purchase it now. And let me tell you why she wears that. And she wears that towards the end of the movie, just after the fact that, you know, she does what she does and helps the city with crime and all of that. But now she's proud. Now she realized, like, you know, even though I'm a superhero, the diabetic community, you know, we wear the CGMs. We wear, you know, we do glucose meters and check our blood glucose. And, you know, we inject ourselves. They're doing all this stuff with superheroes and gadgets and stuff. Like, we're the real superheroes because we fight through whatever we're going through and we still have to fight this diabetes thing. Everybody is their own superhero. That's what that t-shirt means. And she wears it at the end of the movie. Um, that's what that means. Diabetes for like superheroes. It. Cause we've, we we might not fight crime, but we fight this disease. We're our own superheroes. So you can go to gumshi.com and get that shirt. Now, hey, everybody purchasing that oh, shirt. You this know, this is what I'm gonna have you do too. I, I wanna, before we, uh, we're gonna pivot to something else, but before yeah. we before we leave, I want you to drop um, the website for the water, if you're if you're doing that, yeah. if you started that, and then also um, any trailers that they can, you know, they can take a look yeah. at, anything, drop that, you know, drop that in the chat so people will have an opportunity to look at that stuff, because we wanna make sure, we wanna make sure to spread, man, if it, yeah. if it's, if it, it yeah. it's, it's always, you know, mm-hmm. where we start, and then let people, let the community get it out to other people, you know, that's the best yeah. thing that we can do, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And then I will, I will say this, before, before we wrap up, is there, what bit of advice would you give to somebody that's newly diagnosed or that um, that may be struggling with diabetes, you know, that may be struggling um, or, you know, just somebody that's newly diagnosed? What what are some words of encouragement that you would give them? Um, if you're new, newly diagnosed, one, those are the ones that we're really trying to touch, because, like I said, you see how emotional I, I get like those kind of people. It's a mental thing, too. You know, it's not, I just would like to say the ones that's newly diagnosed, it's not a death sentence. It's not like saying you got stage four cancer and you got 60 days to live. If you're diagnosed with diabetes, they got so many, so much new technology and new studies and new this and new that. And even with the foods, it's even more foods than even when I was diagnosed that's healthier for you. And even when you go to these restaurants and stuff, they got a menu for people like us. And so it's not a death sentence, but I would just say, don't give up. Don't, like have diabetes but don't let diabetes have you and and what i mean by that is don't let the mental aspect get to you don't let don't be ashamed of you know you're going off to the side you're going to the bathroom or you're checking your glucose because everybody ain't got cgms so you're not going to check your your glucose and some people do but i don't in front of a whole restaurant full of people and you know so just don't be ashamed and say yeah i'll be back Uh, let me go to the bathroom let me excuse myself just live with it but don't let it get to you to the point that you think it's just the end of the world. You know, I give myself shots. I don't mind saying that. I used to be shy about that, but I give myself several shots a day. But you know what I tell myself? I, it, things could be worse. I could be gone from here. Things could be, be worse. worse. I could be giving myself 10 shots a day. You know, yeah, if I'm doing five sure. or three or whatever, I could be doing 10. Things could be much worse, but you're still alive. And yep. it's not a death sentence. So I just... Just tell people, you know, just get that support system around you because like you said, Brandon, it's, it's just about, you may not be able to keep yourself on track, but it's people, your surroundings, your loved ones, your friends and family, they may be able to say, hey, have you done this today? Call and checking up on you. Are you okay? What can I do for you? Can I cook for you? You know, that's one thing. I'm not a good cooker. So my wife, now she, everybody in my household eat like a diabetic now. You know, not to say that they don't have other stuff that I don't eat, but 
My wife straight up told me straight up when I got diagnosed, I'm not finna make two meals at, at the same time. I'm, I'm gonna make one meal and if whoever else needs it, cause I don't eat meat either. So if, we make, if she makes spaghetti, she puts the meat on the side. If she makes whatever, she puts the, everything on the side and everybody in my family know. So it's not like a burden to them now. They just like, oh man, why? No, they just, everybody fell into line. Mm -hmm. No, hey, there's I no Kool-Aid in this house. Everybody love, drinks I, Crystal Light. <laughs> hey, I love it. Making lifestyle changes, not just for yourself, yeah. but for the entire family. You know what I mean? So, no, nah, yeah. that, that's, that's very that's important. Awesome. But, yes. but let's, um, I want to, I want to thank you first and foremost, man, for, for joining us today. Cause this is, this has been an awesome conversation. I want to make sure you put those links in there. If you can drop them in just oh, so people can yeah. check out the trailers, check out um, the water, check out anything that you have going on. And uh, okay. like I said, Jermaine, man, this is this has been great. These conversations are going to continue to happen. And as we continue to change the narrative of what diabetes looks like, um, you know, for black, indigenous people and people of color around the world, um, we have to start somewhere. So to create change, to, to make change, we have to we have to create it um, from within. And, and we're doing that, man. So I appreciate okay. you. Yeah, Brandon, Jermaine, can I go ahead and uh, when you're done talking, uh, okay. I can show the trailer as well. So, you know, drop okay. those links. But before the this meeting ends, I definitely want the people who are on here to see it. So I'll show okay. it. Okay. Let okay. me before you drop the trailer, let me just tell you some dates. Um, mm -hmm. November 14th. First, I want to give a shout out to American Diabetes Association, Tracy Brown, the CEO. Um, I know she's leaving and she has a big situation at Walgreens, but I want to thank her. Uh, for everything that she's done for us, um, American Diabetes Association, the staff and everything, everything that they're doing will help equity because it ties right into the film. Um, you know, the trailer, uh, the official trailer comes out November 14th. Um, that's going to be doing our conversation with the American Diabetes Association CEO. Um, I interview, I'm doing an interview with them. Um, the official trailer, when I say the official trailer, this is just a teaser trailer. So the official trailer will have the villains, um, more so of the diabetes aspect. I want to show more diabetes stuff, um, more superhero stuff. You know, you're going to know she's a superhero, but it's important for me, this new trailer, to have more diabetes stuff. This last trailer, it showed her being diagnosed or how high her glucose level was. But I want to show in this trailer, when they see this trailer, I'm going to be like, wow, she's a diabetic. Not Because like, everybody don't understand glucose numbers, and I get that. But I just wanted to show the importance of it in this last trailer these how how her numbers was. So she was in the hospital, but this one, it, you know, you'll see the trail. I don't want to give it away, but this shows more of, okay, she's a diabetic and everybody that has diabetes is going to know just from things that's going on in the trailer. Um, so November 14th, that's the official trailer. February 5th, World Bubblegum, National Bubblegum Day. That's the second trailer. Um, that would be more of an extended trailer. It's going to show more of the movie. Um, and then the next trailer would be uh, March or April, and then the full film, uh, June 5th. June 5th is the full length film. And we could show before, we can we can release it before then, but we have a lot of partnerships that we will be announcing real soon. Um, shout out to JBL Audio, um, you know, just different ones. I don't want to name everybody, but that's why we push the people keep saying why we push the film back because we just want this to be the best film. We don't want to rush it out there. We want, you know, because Gumshee's not the only superhero. She's she's the diabetic superhero, but it's a lot of great superheroes. Y'all gonna be like, oh my god, why didn't Marvel think of this? Why, 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 why wasn't this uh, person superpower in the X Men? Because they didn't, you know, everybody's not really thinking like how we're thinking. But I just want to thank everybody. Uh, you know, check out those dates. Those dates, November fourteenth, World Diabetes Day, World Diabetes Month. We will be doing a lot of interviews and a lot of media around the film. I love oh, it. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that's it. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much. And, thank, you know, thank you all for people who are here. <laughs> no, no problem. Hey, Jermaine, thank you again. Casey, thank you again. And thank everybody that tuned in, we, pre we appreciate you. And uh, we're going to keep this thing going. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate everybody. All right. Sounds good. See you later.